Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am Deeti and I am back with another lecture in the DBMS series. So in the last lecture we discussed about first normal form. In this particular video we would be discussing about second normal form. So without any further ado, let's get started. Now before starting with second normal form, let's just re-revise about first normal form. So according to first normal form, in a given table, there shouldn't be any multi-valued attribute. So basically there shouldn't be any column which can hold multiple values. The values should always be atomic. That is there should be always a single value. There shouldn't be multi-valued attribute present in a given table. Now coming to the second normal form. So a relation is in second normal form if it satisfies the following conditions. So the first condition it, it should always be in first normal form. And the second condition is, it should not have any partial dependency, which means no non-prime attribute is dependent on any part of candidate key. Now, candidate key is basically a unique identifier which helps us to uniquely identify records in a table. What is non-prime attribute? So we learnt about prime attributes and non-prime attribute. So consider that in a given table, there are three attributes, A, B and C. And A, B is our candidate key. So the attributes which are a part of candidate key lies in the prime attribute and the attributes which are not a part of candidate key lies in the non-prime attribute. So according to this, there shouldn't be any non-prime attribute that is dependent on any part of a candidate key. Now here we learnt about this term partial dependency. So let's understand what partial dependency exactly is. So what is partial dependency and when a partial dependency is there in a table? So a partial dependency is there in a table when the LHS is a proper subset of candidate key and RHS is a non-prime attribute. So whenever you are given any question, you are provided with all the attributes which are present in the table then you are provided with the functional dependencies like this particular attribute is determining this attribute or b is determining c so these kind of functional dependencies are present in our table now according to partial dependency definition we have to see if lhs is a proper subset of candidate key and RHS is a non-prime attribute. If these exist, then we can say that our table is not in second normal form because there is a partial dependency. So as the term suggests partial dependency, you can understand it in this way that a particular non-prime attribute is partially dependent on candidate key because it says a proper subset. So if a proper subset of AB is to be considered, so it will be A and B. It won't include AB in the set because that is a subset, not a proper set. So whenever we talk about proper subset, it will only contain A and B and not AB. So whenever there is a partial dependency, a part of candidate key is determining a non-prime attribute. So since a part of candidate key is determining, we can say that there is a partial dependency. Because a part is determining, there is a dependency and there is a non-prime attribute which is getting partially determined. So we'll see about partial dependency in the next set of slides but right now you can conclude that if a given table is not in first normal form also if there is some partial dependency we can say that the given table is not in second normal form so what is a non-prime attribute as i told that non-prime attribute is an attribute that is not part of a candidate key now here you can see that there is a table. In this particular table, we have customer ID, we have order ID and we have order name. So we have order ID and according to the order ID, we have the order name. And here we have the customer ID of a customer who has placed this particular order. Now coming to this particular table, we have a candidate key as customer ID and order ID combination. So prime attribute would be the one which is a part of candidate key that is customer ID and order ID. And since now order name is left, so order name will come in non-prime attribute because it is not a part of candidate key. So in this relation, you can see that order name is somehow dependent on order ID for its value. So if order ID is one, the order name is muffin. If order ID is two, the order name is sugar. So order name is somehow dependent only on the order ID. It's not dependent on the customer ID because if I know the customer ID, I can't see the order name before even knowing the order ID. So because of that, the order name is having a dependency on order ID. But here we told that customer ID and order ID both are acting as a candidate key. And here a part of candidate key is determining a non-prime attribute. So we can say that there is a partial dependency. So according to order ID, we provide the order name and order name is determined only by order ID. 
एंड हेयर कस्टमर आई डी ऑर्डर आई डी टूगेदर आर एक्टिंग एज ए कैंडिडेट की बट हेयर ओनली पार्ट ऑफ कैंडिडेट की इज डिटरमाइनिंग द नॉन प्राइम एट्रीब्यूट सो वी कैन से डेट देर इज अ पार्शल डिपेंडेंसी दिस पर्टिकुलर टेबल इज नॉट इन सेकेंड नॉर्मल फॉर्म so how can we make the table in second normal form or how can we normalize the table so as i told that normalization is basically breaking of tables into two or more sub tables or you can say decomposition of table into two or more sub tables so that the duplicacy or data redundancy is reduced also the data is consistent so what we will do is we will divide this particular table into two tables so now the question which would be coming to your mind is how we will even divide this table what all attribute should be there in the first table in the second table or if there are three tables how to divide this particular table so what you can do is firstly let's consider this table so let's name the table as a here the table is b and here the table is c now in a the candidate key is customer id plus order id and we have order name which is kind of dependent on order id so if we know the order id we can get the order name so what we will do is we can see that order id is something which is common between the non prime attribute and the candidate key so we will break the table on the basis of order id and we will try to have order id in the next table as well because in this way we won't lose the track of which particular customer has ordered which particular order so we will divide the table into two or more sub tables and here the table is divided into b and c and here the table is having customer id and order id and here the table is having order id and order so corresponding to the order id we have the order name and here the customer id has the order id corresponding to which we can get the order name from the second table now here can you see that in this particular table we have the candidate key that is customer id plus order id but coming to this particular table what should be the candidate key here so here you can see that order id is also getting repeated order name is also getting repeated so can we say that order id and order name combined would be a candidate key yes we can say that so we will have order id as well as order name combinedly as a candidate key so now you can see that when the table is divided into two or more sub tables we have seen that now order name is directly dependent on order id there is no other candidate key which is present and this is also a prime attribute this is not a non prime attribute because right now this is also a part of candidate key so we can say that now there is no non prime attribute which is getting determined by a part of candidate key so in this way we can normalize the table now coming here you can see that order id is present here and in this table as well in table b and in table c now here you can see that there is a relationship which is established so here the customer tells that this particular order id i have ordered give me the order name so you can see that there is a relationship between two table which is being established and it is established on the basis of order id so this particular order id is taking reference from this table that is b table so we can say that order id here is acting as a foreign key which is helping me to establish the relationship between these two tables so let's solve a this question in which we will be provided with some attributes we will be provided with some functional dependency and we have to say that if the given table is in second normal form or not so let's see so consider that there is a relation r which is having a b c d as attributes the functional dependencies which are provided are a b determines c a b determines d and b determines c now in this relation find if this is in second normal form or not so let's see what we will do so the very first step is we will identify the candidate key in this given relation so how to find the candidate key we have already discussed in one of our videos so you can go ahead and watch it and then come to this video so for candidate key what we will do is firstly we will list down all the attributes which is present in our table secondly what we will do is we will check for all the dependents if the determinants are present here if it's present then we will discard the dependents so here the dependent is c c is already present so ab is the determinant so we can discard c now it's abd now coming to the next functional dependency d is present here and since ab is already present here we can discard d so now coming to the next functional dependency here c is the dependent and b is the determinant but since dependent is not present we can't discard b so at the last we are left with ab so what we will do is we will take the closure of ab and we will see that if it's determining all the attributes which is present in our table so a can determine itself b can determine itself from the property of reflexivity b can also determine c so we can write c ab can also determine d so we can write d so ab can determine all the attributes which is present in our table so we can say that ab is a candidate key and we can add it in the prime attributes 
now in the next step there could be more candidate key so for that what we will do is we will see that if ab is lying in any of the rhs because if ab is someone's dependent and there is a determinant which can determine ab we can replace ab with that or ideally a or b with that so let's see if a b or ab is present in the rhs so here it is c here it is d here it is c so there is no a b or ab present in the rhs so we can say that there will be only one candidate key for this particular table and that is ab now here we have found out that ab is the candidate key here the step 2 we will check for the partial dependency to tell that if this given table is in second normal form or not so for that there should be two rules which should be followed so first is lhs should be a proper subset of candidate key and here we have found out that ab is the candidate key so if we take the proper subset we get a and b so we have to check that if lhs is a proper subset of candidate key in a given functional dependency and if rhs is a non prime attribute so since ab is a candidate key we can say that ab lies in the prime attribute and the rest attribute which is not a part of candidate key we can say it lies in the non prime attribute that is cd if these two exist we can say that there is a partial dependency and table is not in second normal form but if none of the dependency is having any partial dependency we can say the table is in second normal form so these were the functional dependency which were provided to us this is the candidate key that is ab so the prime attributes are ab the non prime attributes are cd so let's check for the first functional dependency so we have to first check if lhs is a proper subset of candidate key or not so ab is a candidate key but there is no proper subset proper subset of ab is a and b but it is combinedly present so since there is no proper subset and since there is a and condition so we won't check for the second condition ab is not a proper subset it is a subset of ab so we can say that this uh, particular functional dependency doesn't have any partial dependency now coming to the second functional dependency so again you can see that there is ab present so there is not a proper subset of ab which is present subset of ab is present so we can also say that this particular dependency is also not having any partial dependency so coming to the third functional dependency that is b determines c so here in the lhs you can say that b is a subset of ab or you can say that b is a subset of candidate key and according to these rules if lhs is a subset of candidate key we need to check for the second rule and if second rule also applies there is a partial dependency so we'll check for rhs and rhs is c which is a non prime attribute and here according to this rule rhs is a non prime attribute and lhs is a proper subset of candidate key then there is a partial dependency so we can say that this particular dependency have some partial dependency because of which this particular table is not in second normal form so from this we can conclude that this particular table is not in second normal form and also we have analyzed the dependency and we saw that one of the dependency was having some partial dependency so that is why the table is not in second normal form so this was all about second normal form in this particular video i hope you like this video so if you like this video please hit the like button if you are someone who is new to my channel can go ahead and watch out the tech content first and if you find it useful can go ahead and subscribe also if you have not followed me on my social media handles you can go ahead and follow the links are in the description till then take care keep learning keep growing keep smiling bye all